Greetings. I've been expecting you. I'm Lawrence Vanderswag, and I want to help you find your way in the world of railways. I'll tell you everything you need to know to set up a successful transport company. If you want to make money transporting passengers, mail, and freight, you need to understand where the need for new railway lines is greatest. This is, for example, where goods are produced. Have a look at the map. Move the map in all directions and change the zoom level. And now turn the camera in all directions. Very well. Now take a closer look at the area around the two cities, San Francisco and Sacramento. Cities and rural businesses are crucial to the transportation business. Cities produce factory goods, mail, and travelers. There is a need for transportation to other cities for these goods. Farms in the countryside produce basic goods and raw materials, which are also needed by cities. As long as there are no railroads, all goods must be transported via simple rural roads. But these transports do not cover long distances, are tedious and slow. Therefore, the transport volume is not very high. Through the railroad, the old transport routes can be replaced. In addition, cities and farms that were previously too far apart can be connected. Improving goods supply ensures that cities grow. Rural businesses in the countryside also grow because they can sell more goods. Take a closer look at Sacramento. Under the name, you can see the size of the city. Move your focus to the city and you'll see what it currently produces for export to other cities. Sacramento has a steady supply of passengers, mail, and export goods every day, some of which is destined for San Francisco. San Francisco, in turn, has goods for Sacramento. Build a rail link between the two cities to take these shipments. First, construct a railroad station in Sacramento. Open the building construction to select it. Then move it to a valid location within the Sacramento city region. It's best to rotate it so that the tracks face San Francisco.
By the way, each station can be expanded after construction with up to two additional buildings and seven tracks. However, certain buildings like factories can get in the way of expanding the tracks. Therefore, do not build the station too close to these buildings. Now build the second station in San Francisco. Move the station to a valid position within the city borders and turn it preferably to the southeast so that you can get well around the bay in the next step. Very good. And now establish a track connection between the two cities. To do this, open the track construction mode and select the first station track at both stations in turn. The stations will then be connected and the entire track will be shown to you as a preview, which you can still modify. The preview track follows the shortest path. However, this is not always possible and often not the cheapest solution. Especially tunnels and bridges can be very expensive. In the overview, you can see how the track construction costs are composed. To change the course of a proposed track, you can insert track points and then move them. Now set such a track point once by selecting the track. Now optimize the cost of the track with the help of track points. Please note that length, slopes, as well as tight curves will have a negative effect on the travel time of your trains. Then confirm the construction. good. The track has been built and can be used immediately. Now set up a rail line.
Now add your stations to the rail line by selecting them one by one. It's enough if the rail line has two stations. Now assign the type of locomotive to the train line which all trains should use. At the moment, you have only one locomotive to choose from. Now specify how many trains should run on the rail line. To start off, one train is enough. The display tells you how many trains are currently active and how many you have requested. For each train, you have to pay the cost of purchasing the locomotive. Now confirm this cost. Fantastic! The train is now immediately deployed and will soon be on its way. Now close the edit mode to see the rail line in action. Zoom in on the train and watch it load. The train is loading goods, passengers and mail destined for the other city. Let's wait until the train reaches the other city. By the way, you can increase the gameplay speed at any time. Also, the game runs faster when you zoom out. The train has arrived and is being unloaded. The numbers rising above the train are the transport revenue. This is the most important source of revenue for your company. However, each train also generates personnel and maintenance costs. But more on that later. Keep watching for a bit and this tutorial will end. Hello! 
In this lesson, I want to give you some additional information about track construction. You already know the basics, but I have a few important tips. First, consider the cattle farm with the road connection to Sacramento. The road tells us that the farm can deliver goods to the city, in this case, livestock to the meat industry. But transportation by roads is slow and limited. Sacramento could produce more meat if the city received more livestock. Therefore, you are now to establish a railroad connection between the cattle farm and Sacramento. In order for a rural business to use a station, the station must be set up nearby. This is indicated to you by a line from the farm to the station. Very good. And now build the track between the new station and the station in Sacramento. Don't use the first two station tracks in Sacramento though, because we still need them for the connection to San Francisco. Great, but before you build the track, I want to explain how you can influence the height of a track. To do this, insert a track point on the track and change its height. You will see the controls at the bottom of the screen when you move the focus over the track point. With the height of a track point, you can influence tunnels, bridges, and slopes. Now, optimize the track so that no tunnels or bridges are needed, and the track has a length of less than 250 kilometers, or 160 miles. Then, confirm the track construction. Excellent. Now, set up a rail line between the cattle operation and Sacramento. To do this, create a new rail line between the two stations, select a locomotive and a train, and confirm the cost. That done, the rail line can begin service. But suppose the demand for cattle becomes so great that one train on this line is not enough. Then you would have to add another train. But this is not possible at the moment because there are no parallel tracks. Therefore, you should now build a side track and define directions of travel so that several trains can operate between the cattle farm and Sacramento. Open the track build mode again. Now select the track at the marked position to insert a switch. Now it gets tricky. You have to lay the new track as a parallel track to the existing one. Parallel tracks are much cheaper and offer many advantages. Move your cursor to the marked position and make sure that the parallel track symbol appears on the cursor. Then confirm the position. Very good. Now the track will continue to be built as a parallel track. Now select the last position for your sidetrack near the cattle farm. You will see the complete track with two switches as a preview. 
then confirm the construction and pay for this track. Now you have to set directions for the two parallel tracks. Otherwise, your trains will always choose the shortest way and not use the side track. Now open the direction mode and select both tracks several times so that they receive different directions. Very good. Now your trains can go one way and return the other. Why don't you zoom in close to one of the new turnouts and take a look at the signals that were automatically created by the turnouts and the direction of travel. These signals define directions of travel and tell trains where to stop if the track section in front of them is already occupied or reserved. But at the moment, you don't need a second train on this route because your rail line can already transport much more livestock than the previous rural road. This allows the meat industry in Sacramento to produce more meat, which also benefits your rail line to San Francisco. Now, let's take a closer look at this rail line. Open the Sacramento City dialog by selecting the Sacramento City borders. You can select anything except special buildings. Important information about the city is shown here. At the top, the citizens of the city are displayed. Below that is how many wagons of goods the citizens and the industries in the city could consume and how well this demand is currently covered. Furthermore, the current train usage is shown for freight, passengers, and mail. Below that, it shows how many passengers and how much mail are currently waiting for transport and how much is added per week. It is important to note here, these express goods do not wait forever. For example, after a few days of waiting, travelers will gradually abandon their journey or look for another way. The same is true for mail. So if you want to transport as many express goods to San Francisco as possible, a train should leave Sacramento every five to 10 days. However, your existing rail line only has one train and only reaches Sacramento every 15 to 20 days. So you have to put in another train. However, this route does not offer any alternative options for several trains. Now you have to change that, but this time with a different method than before. Open the track construction mode and build a railway line from track two in Sacramento to track two in San Francisco. You will see that this track is automatically planned as a parallel track and is therefore very convenient. Two parallel tracks do not help yet. We still have to connect them. There is a very practical method for this, the station gridiron. With it, you can connect parallel tracks in front of stations. Select the station gridiron and build it in front of the Sacramento and San Francisco stations.
excellent. Now set different directions for the two parallel tracks so that the trains can avoid each other. Select the track direction mode again and set different directions for the two tracks by selecting the track sections. Excellent! By setting directions, all signals are automatically created here as well. Now your track is ready for more trains. Close the track construction mode and select the rail line from Sacramento to San Francisco. You can do this in several ways. First, you can simply select the train that is traveling between the two cities. Do that. You can also simply switch through all your rail lines. Try that too. And there is a third way. Select a track between San Francisco and Sacramento. Then a list of all the rail lines that use this track will open on the left. You can also select the desired rail line from this list. Now select Edit Rail Line and increase the number of trains to two. The cost of this is for the locomotive, which has to be bought new. Fortunately, the wagons cost you nothing. Confirm the cost so the second train can be purchased and then close the mode. Perfect! Take a close look at the station and the station gridiron in Sacramento. The new train can be created immediately because thanks to the gridiron, both tracks are available to the rail line. The gridiron is more than just a crossover. While the train always chooses the shortest way at a crossover, at the gridiron, free tracks at the station are preferred. You can place gridirons at all parallel tracks in front of a station if there is enough space available, because the more tracks are to be connected, the longer the structure. Since the station gridiron can only be used by one train at a time, I wouldn't recommend you to connect more than four parallel tracks. Now let's wait for the train. And already the new train is on the way. By the way, the train number of the train you are currently looking at is shown above. Switch through the trains on your train line once. This is useful, for example, if you want to see what each train has loaded. And that's the end of this lesson. You now know how to create switches, side tracks, parallel tracks, track directions, and station gridirons. With this, you can already create any complex track system. You'll figure out other objects like crossings as you build tracks yourself. Welcome to my lesson on locomotive maintenance. First, you need to know that all locomotives have different maintenance intervals and consumption depending on their type. Take a look at the rail line between Sacramento and San Francisco. Here you can see the current state of the locomotive. The lower the condition is, the more often the train has a breakdown and stops on the way. Locomotives are automatically repaired at stations if they have a maintenance depot. 
To do this, try choosing the station in Sacramento. Here you can select Construct Extension. Do that and take a look at the options available. Then build a maintenance depot. Very good. Whenever the state bar of a locomotive has dropped to about 60%, it will be serviced. And since the Sacramento station is used by both of your train lines, the maintenance depot also benefits both train lines. Now close the station again and select a train line once more. These three bars show the levels of water, sand, and oil. If operating materials are missing, the locomotive will be significantly slower. Water is needed on a daily basis. Sand is needed when going uphill to increase the friction of the wheels. Oil is needed to lubricate moving parts, and the amount required is dependent upon the distance traveled. All of the operating materials that a locomotive requires can be obtained at supply towers, which must be built along the tracks. Open the building menu and select the supply tower. Now build a supply tower near each of the marked positions. Very good. Both rail lines can now reach a supply tower. You can build them at any position along your lines, but they should be far enough away from switches and stations so that a long train can stop at them without creating conflicts. There is one more building that has to do with maintenance, the maintenance post. Select this building type. Unlike the maintenance depot or the supply tower, the maintenance post is not a required building type. It is suitable, however, when many trains come together in a small space because the maintenance post can reduce breakdowns and thus long traffic jams and conflicts considerably. However, this also results in daily upkeep costs. This brings us to the end of this lesson. Feel free to look around some more. Once you have finished, this tutorial will end.